Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. Because this is Biquad High Low. And if you've been keeping up, you've already got this. Thing is, you don't have it in a standalone form. So here's what this looks like. What I just did was take high pass and low pass and turn them up all the way. That's because this is what you get in Console X, specifically Console X channel and Console X pre. And I put out components of these plugins in case you need to use the functionality of that in something that's a little less sort of heavyweight. So why might you need to use uh, something like a high pass or a low pass or both when you're already using console X? Imagine you've got this. So this is a little collection of plugins. This top one is just on that guitar track. The bottom one is on the full mix so we can bypass it or turn it on. And this is an instance of Air Windows 2 Tape 8 on the guitar. And you heard it doing that. And then this is an instance of Console X Channel, also on the guitar, made into tiny, tiny form, because it can. It's resizable in a rather drastic way, so you can become very silly with it. But this instance of biquad high low is the same as the relatively unreachable. You'd have to make the window bigger to be able to use it. Um, well, actually, that's not true. I can use this knob. It's just not useful because you can't click on it very easily when it's only one pixel in size. But if you put an instance of the high pass and low pass in front of two tape and then run that into the console, you're replicating a workflow that is not unlike what we used to do back in the days of analog. And you can do this. Here we have two tape using the guitar. So we can boost. And you notice that that's louder. but maybe it's not exactly cleaner. So what do you do if you're running to analog tape and you need to condition it in some way? This is something that I learned from a guy that I knew a little bit, uh, Tim Gillies, who went by Slipperman. That is a noted um, heavy metal guitar expert. And he spoke highly of being able to condition sound going into the tape, which you could do with Console X Pre, but that's a whole elaborate, well, I mean, you see how big Console X is, technically microscopic right now, but it's a heavyweight plug-in. There's a lot going on there. It's got a meter. It's got all this stuff. But this, this is much more lightweight. So if you did this, we've got the guitar being slammed much harder to the tape we can use the high pass and the low pass. And you could also use things like the EQs in Console X. Console X Pre is what you would use for this. But if you don't need to use all the EQs to get really micromanagey with it, as it hits tape, you can simply trap in the highs and the lows, something else that Slipperman would say as far as managing the sound to tape. And it goes a little bit like this. <laughs> you make it much narrower. And then, now, with a little adjustment, we have a really strong guitar sound without 
five point high low is this. With five point high low, like this. And again, if we don't do that subtle high passing and low passing, we're still running that same guitar sound to tape. And this is going to be more extreme with like big heavy sounds where you've got a 4x12 cab or a cab simulation or something like that. You can have a whole chain of weird stuff that's designed to replicate situations you could end up with in a real studio, making real amps and things like that. So again, if we start without the filtering, we're hitting tape fairly hard, but it's not optimized. Then we turn on by quad high low. We could do the same thing on the two bus if we want. Or maybe we don't want to do that. But uh, it just goes to show that's what that plugin sounds like. So this is, much like Console X is, a open source, free Patreon supported plugin. And Granted, you've already got it. If you're using console X, this is the high pass and low pass in console X channel and console X bus, I mean, console X pre. Technically, console X bus has a different high pass and low pass because they run full range like an isolator filter. Just because I thought, well, what if people wanted to do that in the middle of a mix? And they all bypass themselves when you turn them all the way off. And yeah, it's just me filling in a detail of what's available in this system in a like lower impact form in case you didn't want to run a, inst a instance of the full giant ginormous plugin 20 million times over on however many tracks you've got, or say you've got a whole bunch of guitars and you want them all to do that. What you do is, if you've got your whole bunch of guitars, you, in using Console X, at least in Reaper, you can select all of the guitars and assign them to a fader and manipulate them all at the same time, or assign them and then use a control surface to dial in the tones of them all at the same time. But you could also simply dial in the tone of the biquad high-low to condition how they hit the tape emulation if you're using that, and then drag out onto um, other tracks, and it should keep the settings that it has. But if you've got a bunch of tracks, maybe it'll matter that you have a plugin where it's more lightweight. It's a generic interface plugin. It only has the high pass and low pass functionality without all the other stuff. It's not doing any displays. It's not doing any meters. It's not doing the dynamics processing that the full one has. And again, you do have Console X Pre if you want to have all of that going to the virtual tape and then also do it again, coming back off the tape and getting into the mix. Now, a little note as far as Console X is concerned, uh, that was a ride because as it released, uh, it released with all kinds of problems, and I was scrambling around on Christmas Day trying to fix everything. So as I write this, version 006 is the most recent version of Console X. And that fixes a early problem where it was not saving settings between, like, it, this even hit me. I did the Console X demo using that very early version, and I quit, and I wouldn't be able to get back the mix that I did on that video, even if I tried, because it didn't remember it, so I had to do it over again.
but uh, uh, version 005 and 006, if I remember correctly, um, have that fixed. I think it was fixed as early as 003, but it uh, doesn't matter. Use the most recent one, and it'll remember what you did. I also had people having problems on Windows. If you only caught the beginning of that and then didn't catch any of the follow-up, if it's crashing on Windows, it might be because airwindowsglobals.txt is telling it to use what I started out with, which is the font Jost, or Yost, or however you pronounce it. And if you didn't have that font, it would crash. So I changed Air Windows Globals in the version I was distributing to say Arial, because Windows installations have Arial, and because it wasn't crashing if you gave it the wrong font on Mac. So I, I set it up with a font that is going to be there on Windows, and it won't really matter if it's there or not on Mac because it wasn't crashing under that circumstance. And yeah, we will carry on and do the best we can with all of this. Again, if you are still having problems, especially things like crashing bugs, and you can come up with logs or crash reports, I would like to hear about them. I'm either happy or dismayed that I'm not hearing any further questions about crash reports, because either it means that people aren't getting crashes or problems anymore, and that would be amazing, or they're not telling me. And if you don't tell me, I can't fix them. I might not be able to fix them anyway, but if you don't tell me, I definitely can't fix them. Might be getting into a zone where I can uh, put in a little more work on that stuff. And 2025 hopefully can give rise to a lot of new stuff if I can perfect this GUI plugin releasing mojo that I have just begun. I'm quite interested in doing more in that regard. I have also discovered a neat thing, which if you were following me on Blue Sky, you will have noticed um, my friend Paul, Bacon Paul, who has done a great deal as far as like guiding me through the being able to do plugins with GUI and all that kind of stuff, and who is very involved in the Surge XT project. Well, now I have two favorite open source synthesizer plugins, because one of them is Surge XT. It's really quite amazing. But then Bacon Paul has also released a thing called Six Signs. So this is another free open source project. I don't think it counts as promoting commercial products because nobody is getting paid any money for this. I'm not getting paid any money to promote it. It's just something that a friend of mine did, but I'm very excited about it all the same. It's essentially a six operator FM synth that's very minimalist. And what I'm finding is that this is perhaps my best ticket to being able to use a open source synth in the box that will give me a controllable system that sounds and acts quite a lot like my elaborate modular synthesizers. It really, because it's doing a thing where his system there is just naive over sampling, the same as I'm doing on my modular with the chord organ uh, modules where they're running a, a simple 12-bit thing but they're doing it at 300 kilohertz, so it doesn't get aliasing. Paul's doing a whole six operator FM synthesizer, which I'm finding quite, it, it responds to my X key really nicely. It does poly aftertouch and stuff like that, but he's doing it at two and a half times the sample rate. And then just doing a neat uh, sync interpolation down sample in fairly simple code to the output and not doing anything further with it. So it becomes this raw source of like FM synth sound of extraordinary purity. I'm loving the tone of this thing. I'm not sure he actually designed it to be like tone uber all, but I really like the tone of this thing. And 
the neat thing about that is I can run it into an instance of console X in the mix. And that gives me many opportunities for doing like voicing and the the same thing as I'm doing this week of the high pass and low pass as part of console X. A little of the Kalman filtering, or I can run it into a distortion of some kind, who knows what, just a lot of possible things to, to do. And so it can become a hybrid thing where there is a synthesizer voice. And I hope to do some, I'm planning to do some live streams where I just come up with synthesizer sounds using these techniques. A synthesizer voice directly from Bacon Paul that is, again, the six signs FM synth of extraordinary purity. So it's like coming straight off of dope for sign generators in FM with each other. It's, it really nails that stuff. You can get totally radiophonic workshop with, workshop with this thing. It's nuts. And of course, FM synthesis is one of the classic sounds coming into stuff like drum and bass, but you usually run it into like a Mackie and thrash it. And of course I have the uh, X filters for like Mackie style. Uh, well, it's, that's a separate thing. I've got Mackie style and then I've also got stuff based off a of sampler and those are the X filters. Point being, I've got a lot of gnarly drum and bass sounding filters that we can run this new synthesizer into. And I feel the potential of that is extremely high. So that's going to be fun. And until then, I hope you enjoy by quad high low. Again, you've already got this. It lives in uh, console X. But if you wanted to have another instance of it, and running console X was too heavyweight, so you couldn't run lots of instances of that, this is a way to include that functionality in a more subtle way. Or maybe you were just trying to do that kind of thing and you wanted to have it touch the sound as little as possible. That's another reason to go for the standalone. I'll talk to you later and I will get back to sometimes January is work and sometimes January is just take a deep breath, play some Minecraft or something and rest. And I'm not sure exactly which it is. Maybe I'll do some of both this month. But I'll catch up with you folks in the streams, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.